Dr. Midori Daimon from Study in Japan for Africa program. Good morning. Mzuri sana hujambo sijui atujui wewe sisi tutajakuona siku mingi sana Siti alikuwa ameenda amerudi how are you Sijambo sana <laughs> It's good to have you on the show again Okay thank you very much for coming us Yes that proverb have you understood it <laughs> Not yet actually hmm. Porcupine what is that You know that animal that has like spikes. Ah okay, uh-huh. Not the hedgehog, the yeah. bigger one, the porcupine. All oh, right. Right? And then and they're really prickly. Yeah. So if you touch one, what do you think is going to happen? It's it's sti- it's stinked. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's what it is. <laughs> you play push with that animal? Uh-huh. Expect to have sore yeah, hands. Yes. Yeah. Oh, mhm. So you have to be careful. Yes. When, when you see mm, very careful. Something. Mm. First know what you're playing with. So yeah. you expect there. Eh? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chances of consequences. Okay. Once you know what you're playing with, then yeah. you can play with it. Then you can play with it. Yes. You know how best to play with it. Yes. Oh. Today we want to talk about a uh, graduate programs in the field of humanities and social sciences. Yes. We've talked about uh, other science and engineering courses. Mm-hmm. Um, now today it's about social sciences. Just bring us up to speed those who are joining the conversation today mm-hmm. studying in Japan and why studying in Japan is um, something one should consider. Now I okay firstly we are uh, now we have like 1500 sub-Saharan African students there but we would like to to increase more and more and then especially uh, as you know like Japan is somehow popular as a technique tech as a country with good high quality technique Te- technology i yes. mean yes so many students now studying in science field yeah. but i'd like to also emphasize uh, emphasize <laughs> emphasize the, the the field of humanities and social science such yeah. as business and uh, administration yeah. or management mm. or even political science yeah those field mm. yes that is why i'm here to invite the university which has strong strong department mm. in that field yes. okay so we have two guests who are joining us yes. one of them is from the international university of japan and the other one is from the national graduate institute for policy studies uh, dr ian karusigarira is a lecturer at the national graduate institute for policy studies and professor hiroshi kato is the vice president at the international university of japan good morning to both of you gentlemen i want to start straight with you dr ian karusigarira good morning I think it's afternoon for you. How are you? Yes, good morning, good afternoon um, for everyone near and far. Mm. Uh, my name is Ian Kasigaira and I'm a lecturer at a graduate school uh, called Grips. I'm happy to be in the studio. Thank you very much. Uh, Karibu sana. Tell us about your institution. Oh, yes. Actually, um, this is a very timely uh, show because we are actually celebrating 25 years of existence at GRIPS, mm-hmm. National Graduate Institute uh, for Policy Studies. And um, it has been in existence um, for the last 20, for the last 25. Uh, but particularly, I'm mostly interested in my program called the G-Tube. Um, G-Tube is uh, like three Gs. Uh, GRIPS, Global, uh, GRIPS uh, Global Governance Program. And uh, this global governance program has uh, three concentrations. One is, I would say, uh, is uh, international development studies. Uh, the other one is growth and governance studies. And the other one is uh, security and international studies. Mm-hmm. So whichever, whichever concentration you take, we determine uh, what kind of courses you do at GRIPS. Either way, uh, we focus on uh, mainly the government, uh, government career need career officers who definitely would have to contribute to the development of our government uh, in Africa. I must also submit that since it's in um, initial stages, uh, its initial inception, uh, GRIPS has already graduated more than 60 graduates and a vast majority of these might come from uh, sub-Saharan Africa and Africa in general. So uh, it's our institution and definitely I would want to implore most of the students, especially those Uh, interested in governance and in general practice of government to come and 
uh, pick interest in uh, this kind of of uh, program. As, as other than my program, we definitely have other courses. We we have master's courses. courses. Like I said, uh, the the G Cube has three concentrations. Mm. But outside the G Cube, we have also the master's program within groups. Uh, one is young leaders program. The other one is MP1, or we call it one year master's program of public policy. Uh, the other is uh, two year master's public policy. Same program, but one is one year, another one is two years. And um, we also have macroeconomics policy programs. We have public finance program. Uh, we have economics planning and public policy program. We have disaster and uh, disaster management policy program, mm. maritime safety and security program. All these are master's programs. You can uh, go to our website uh, and, and check these programs. And then you can find a way how you can enter uh, just in, in, a, in a brief way to introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, we also have PhD programs other than the GQ. We have five-year program which starts with masters throughout the PhD, and that is policy analysis program. It, uh, we also have disaster prog management program, which also connects to the masters that relates to disaster management and so on. We also have science, technology, and innovation policy program. All these are associated with how we can deal with um, enhancement of policy in a changing uh, global context. Okay. We'll talk more about uh, your institute and the programs that you're offering. Let's first uh, introduce and welcome mm -hmm. Professor Hiroshi Kato. He's a vice president at the International University of Japan. Professor, good morning, good afternoon. How are you doing today? Good morning, Jumbo, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me. Yep. So tell us about your university, the International University of Japan. Okay. Um, there are several things that I want you to know about uh, our university. Let me give you an overview of the school. Mm. It's a fairly new university created only uh, 40 years ago, 82. We are celebrating our 40th anniversary this year. And second point, um, it is a graduate school only university, like uh, the Greek. Uh, we don't have undergraduate faculty. We have two um, uh, graduate schools. One is international relations, the other international management. This international management is basically this school. And a third point that I want you to know is it is a very internationalized university, which makes uh, IUJ a very unique university compared to other Japanese universities. Our faculty members are very well international, and the Japanese faculty members comprise only one-fourth of the total number of faculty members. Mm. And 90% of our students are from abroad, and actually we welcome students from 50 countries around the world. And fourthly, um, we are very much committed to the human resource development in Africa, and I may have time to talk more, uh, more about this, but, you know, we are proud of having been a university which has been very active in receiving students from Africa, including, of course, Kenya. So that's an overview of our IUJ, and uh, if you allow me to do so, I'll be talking more about our university later. Thank you for having me again. Um, can you explain why it is the university was set up in the first place? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, um, oh, I forgot to mention that it, uh, IUJ is very unique where all the courses are taught in English. And this is um, not very common in other Japanese universities. Maybe GRIPS might be an exception where a lot of courses are taught in English. But, you know, uh, IUJ is the first uh, university in Japan where all the courses are taught in English. And the reason why they have established this school 40 years ago is that there was a strong commitment from the private sector. Uh, in the 1980s, back in the 1980s, Japan was growing very rapidly 
and emerging as a world economic powerhouse. Unfortunately, however, the Japanese people at that time were not able to speak in English and, and discuss and debate with international leaders. So the business leaders at that time thought that it might be a good idea to create a university where all the subjects are taught in English and where both Japanese and international students study together and to um, bond, uh, grow, develop friendship and uh, strong, uh, develop strong bonds. And you know, that's, that's why the university came to be uh, created in 1982. And that spirit remains even today. So uh, as such, this university has all the courses taught in English, and it has uh, several programs uh, concentrated in social sciences, such as international relations, economics, and public policy, as well as uh, business administration. So uh, strong commitment from the private sector was a short answer to your question. Now. The focus seems to be on social sciences, if I get you right. Uh, yes. Why is that? Oh. <laughs> well, maybe um, this is my personal interpretation, but I think the founding fathers of our university thought that um, uh, leaders, uh, young leaders of Japan, must be prepared to have abilities to discuss various issues of international importance, such as international relations, development, and business administration in English. Whereas Japan, as Midori-san was saying, Japan has many excellent universities which excel in natural sciences, engineering, and technologies. So I, I, my interpretation is that the lead founding fathers of our university thought that uh, these subjects of um, social sciences uh, must be uh, the prioritized subject for young leaders, future leaders of Japan. That's my interpretation. In terms of the cost of studying in uh, this international university, how do you compare with other international universities, say, in the world? Is it cost effective? Is it something that someone can afford with great ease, or is it something that you need to have the entire community contributing for you before you study? That's an interesting question. Yes, you know, um, you can say the cost of studying at IUJ can be expensive or inexpensive, depending uh, on which university or which universities you compare IUJ with. If you compare IUJ with, say, um, first-class prestigious university in the United States, definitely IUJ is less expensive than such uh, uh, universities. And compared to other universities in Japan, maybe uh, IUJ is on the expensive side. Being a private university, unlike the GRIP, which Ian Sensei represents, IJ is a private university, and we need to maintain, you know, the found financial foundation of our school. So our fees and other costs are tend to be more expensive than many of the Japanese universities, which are na national or state uh, supported. But I hasten to add that IJ has a number of scholarship opportunities. So. Uh, you can rely on the Kenyan government scholarship, Japanese government scholarship, or um, scholarships provided by uh, public organizations like JICA, the Japan International Corporation Agency, with which IUJ enjoys a very friendly relationship. And actually, we have many students sponsored and supported by such public institutions. So in a nutshell, although in, the, um, in terms of the uh, mount that you, you find on the catalog of our university. Yes, our university is relatively expensive university compared to other Japanese universities. But when you come, uh, you know, from the perspective of individual and relief students, you might not find IUJ such an expensive university to study at. 
Um, coming back to you, uh, Dr. Ian, um, also looking at some of the things that you talked about, the, the GRIPS program. So which students then are you targeting? Um, which interest group of students would you say would fit well into this program? Yes, uh, well, a very good question, and it points to exactly what we do at G-Cube. At G-Cube, um, within GRIPS, we are focusing on government, uh, government officials and um, international organizations across the world. Um, at the moment, we are very interested in uh, applicants from Africa uh, because we think we need more capacity. We need to improve uh, the way we are approaching uh, the, our global context right now. So we are encouraging most people from Africa to actually participate in this program. And like a uh, professor from I, I, I International Christian, International, uh, what, what is it again? University of Japan. University of Japan. Um, I, I'm, I'm most, um, we have a lot of scholarships specifically for uh, that program. We, are, we connect, we connect with JICA, we have MEXT. And also within within groups, they definitely just like any other university in Japan, they have uh, tuition waivers. So you can come to Japan through these kinds of scholarships or through the government support, especially like um, government institutions that are interested in capacity building of the institutions. Uh, but also, you can come as an individual who wants to pay for yourself for quality education in Japan. Um, I just want to point to this because I feel it's important for our African friends who want to venture into further studies that uh, there is nothing more important than gaining new knowledge. And uh, for me, Japan is one of the kind of important uh, places to go to. Um, it's kind of a, decolon a decolonizing uh, context not in a sense that Japan does not colonize or did not colonize, but the fact that Africa has no colonial relationship with Africa, we have a chance to sit on a table and think about the future of our continent uh, without duress, without fear. So we have more bigger platforms to think about Africa as Africa, not Africa as Africa's uh, uh, colonial, colonialist Africa. So when we step out of our context and come to Japan, definitely we gain a lot of knowledge beyond mere entering the classroom. So I would encourage you to do that. So uh, beyond G-Cube, like I said, uh, uh, responding to the question, uh, we have a vast majority of courses that actually have nothing to do with G-Cube, but maybe somehow related. We do the same courses, but they, have, they are tailored in different ways, all of them leading to policy. So you can finish the university immediately and actually apply for a course in, in, in Japan for your master's of, after your bachelor's. Uh, either one year program that is MP1 uh, or MP2 or microeconomics policy program, uh, considering your future, how your future looks like or how you have been um, uh, flaming yourself after graduation, then you can definitely enter some of these master's programs. Uh, but most importantly, um, further studies would require that you, you, you know, think deeper on what you want to have from the studies in Japan. It's not just going to study in Japan, but how do I want to gain or how will my society gain from my studying in Japan? Uh, I would definitely share uh, the fact that you, you can go to our website, uh, check all the programs, master's or PhD for those interested uh, in these kinds of programs, and uh, check uh, the deadlines deadlines are really, really important, and all these minute issues that connect to entering university, for example, age limit, uh, some people will, will ask, I, don't, I want to join, but I'm 50, I'm 40, I'm 35, or some, some age, you might not get a scholarship, but some age and below, that, for example, if you're entering a PhD when you're beyond 40, you definitely know that your chances for scholarships are limited. So you need to think about uh, the age limit for the program and um, and apply accordingly. Uh, the other important thing is is that when you're entering, when you're deciding to have a mindset for further studies, you need to be ready to face the new challenge. The new challenge is graduate school. So it's not a, like a silver platter kind of. 
uh, you you plan and then you 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 know prepare yourself so well focusing on what the interest of the institution is uh, the interest of the professors in that institution uh, read around what they are doing show interest in one way or another don't just write an email to a professor asking if you can join the university without knowing what the university is i uh, don't even know its name you don't know the professors you don't know the courses they're offering so before you set your your level your your readiness to start first make uh, preliminary findings and uh, all the necessary requirements. Good advice there. And let's take a break at this point, 29 minutes after seven. Dr. Ian, please help me pronounce your second name. Uh, my name is uh, Karusigarira. Ah, I get it. Karusigarira. <laughs> Karusigarira. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Ian Karusigarira. <laughs> is a lecturer at the National Graduate Institute for Policy Studies in Japan. He's joined by Professor Hiroshi Kato, Vice President, International University of Japan. And in the studio with us is Dr. Midori Daimon from the Study in Japan for Africa program. Dr. Midori would like you to remember that this Friday and Saturday, they have a program that's lined up the 30th of September and the 1st of October. You can actually log on to their program and you get to access um, meetings with several universities that will be participating 26 universities offering 46 programs and uh, she'll tell us about how to log on to that how to select the kind of university you want to talk to and the timing and all after we take this break this is the situation room the only way to start your day the conversation continues we are talking about uh, postgraduate and graduate programs in japan graduate programs in the field of humanities and social sciences in Japan, Dr. Ian Karusigarira is a lecturer at the National Graduate Institute for Policy Studies. Professor Hiroshi Kato is the Vice President, International University of Japan. They're telling us about the programs that the two institutions offer, how you can apply, in some cases, how you can even apply for scholarships. And Dr. Midori Daibon is in the studio here with us. She's from the Study in Japan Program for Africa City. Uh, Dr. Ian, uh, the courses that are offered at GRIT, the thing that comes to mind is how exactly do the students who graduate from your institution fit into the communities within our continent? Let's take, for instance, in Uganda, if someone studied or uh, took one of the various courses that you offer, where exactly would they fit in? Yes, um Thank you very much for that very intriguing question. Um, it points to actually a bigger picture of uh, placement after school, uh, whether for grips or elsewhere. I think, uh, I feel that um, there, is a, there is a limitation on where you go when you finish school. Uh, even in Uganda, after school, you, you really struggle with how to do, to do things. Um, I was one of the most privileged people uh, to join uh, to join university abroad uh, while I was working uh, with Uganda, uh, with the Ugandan government. And then I felt maybe I needed, I needed placement. So uh, it's not always as we expect it, but in particular for groups, uh, I think we, are, we don't have such problems because we expect students who come to our university are already connected to the government or to international organizations. So when they finish, they should go back and and uh, continue contributing to to the well-being of their of their institutions uh there can also be exceptions where students when they they finish their studies they want to venture into other opportunities uh those are the bigger the vast majority of of uh of students who hope for a uh, better life after school so we have those people who want to finish school and go to other subfields or other institutions to work. But mainly we are focusing on people who are already working with government so that they can build capacity in our government and maybe be able to deal with bigger, bigger questions of the world. And um, I must report also that most of our students who have finished have um, in one or another been, you know, influential in the institutions. So perhaps we hope that they can we can get more platforms uh when they finish school maybe they have bigger platforms in our in our institutions so that they can demonstrate what exactly they studied abroad uh it's not only for japan but also diaspora in in anywhere in the world maybe 
every time we come back with some new knowledge, definitely it impacts greatly on our society. So maybe we should give them um, a bigger hand, even in private sector or in government sector or in international organizations. These people have new valuable knowledge or information that we need to adapt or to co-opt so that we can have our continent go ahead. Something I'd like to ask, uh, specific to Uganda, does the government have uh, an administrative college of sorts? I mean, in Kenya, we have the Kenya Institute of Administration. Does Uganda have a, some, an equivalent? <laughs> Yeah, in uh, in Uganda, different institutions uh, have have uh, institutional organizations, mm. uh, inst- inst- the institutes that 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 take care of their uh, their government officers. Uh, but I think basically we have been we have been doing well in in terms of security. We have security institutions like um, we have senior police command college where we actually offer masters. Mm. We have uh, the, the military institution also where they give uh, qualifications. But when it comes to other capacity building institutions, uh, we really have a, maybe the private sector like UMY is a very, very popular uh, policy institution. So in terms of general government, we really have, uh, we, are, we lack that, we lack capacity. But of course, when you add the private sector and government institutions like Makere University, Chambog University, and other public universities, you may have uh, an opportunity to talk about that. But in general, as Kenya has, maybe we, we are slightly lagging behind. The reason why I ask the question is because I've listened to what you have to say about GRIP, and I've seen the, mm. uh, the diversity of courses that you offer, and I actually understand the importance of them. What I was wondering was, whether it is that you have an understanding with some of the government institutions so that the courses you offer can speak very, very directly to the needs of the country itself. That is really what I was wondering about. That, that, that was what was at the back of my mind. Mm, yeah, I, um, I would really address that. Uh, that most students who come to do masters and PhDs uh, come with their already institutional tailored questions mm. and we try to give them capacity to analyze those questions basing on what they have seen in the institutions. Okay. Uh, so we hope that our students are already tailored to the needs of the organizations mm. and and quite interestingly uh, it's always actually about what the institutions are really actually facing. Uh, as for as for me, I studied abroad uh, um, for my masters, and initially I was a common, you know, police officer. And my biggest problem I wanted to address was police corruption. <laughs> so when I went abroad, I just knew my problem. I knew the problem of my institution, and I needed to address that problem. So um, in the process of my learning abroad, I could put the context of Japan, context of Uganda, and learn the two cultures and see where the problem is, and uh, perhaps uh, I had to finish my master's with that kind of understanding. Mm. Okay, coming to so you... So definitely for graduate school, mm. you're already tailored. Okay. Professor Kato, a question for you. I mean, just listening to um, what Dr. Ian had said before in terms of having this direct communication with your professor or with your who your lecturers would be beforehand. Do you find this to be the same thing here? Because then it would seem to me as though we are looking at an all-encompassing approach to education that you then have to be in close relation with your professor. And do we find that at the University of Japan as well? You mean how we address the issues uh, that students come to the university with? Even applying to university in the first place, do you find that you know it's necessary to be in touch with your future professors to talk about you know you know the education that you mm-hmm. will be then getting mm-hmm. into as you approach school? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, we read very carefully the personal documents, a personal statement, and their research uh, proposals submitted by the applicant. And if we find those, you know, research proposals 
quite uh, inappropriate for the programs we offer at IUJ. We sometimes decline their application. So we have a kind of um, uh, not direct but indirect communication with the applicant to make sure that he or she will have a very meaningful academic life at IUJ before he or she applies to IUJ. So I think there is no mismatch uh, about that. We know that we are able to support the students in pursuing his or her academic goals. So that is, uh, I don't think, uh, I think that is uh, well taken care of at our university. And I don't think uh, the situation is different at Greeks as well. Uh, Professor, you mentioned that you have a very wonderful and close relationship with JICA. Now, uh, the, the, those mm -hmm. of us who live in Kenya know JICA very well because JICA has been responsible for very many positive things in this country, uh, no, no, not to mention uh, academia. Now, do you have any other partnerships, say, with other universities around the world or any universities in Africa? Uh, our university UC has a friend, uh, relationship with African universities, you mean? Yes. Do you have any relationship, partnership with any African university? Yes, actually, um, we used to have a, a, a memorandum of, of understanding on the possible collaborative relationship with the University of Ghana, uh, which unfortunately expired uh, this uh, last March. So we are trying to reinvigorate uh, that uh, collaborative relationship. And I also have a relationship um, memorandum of understanding with the University of uh, Pretoria in South Africa. So, but you know, unfortunately, uh, those um, um, you know memoranda of understanding haven't been very active. So we want to you know reactivate our collaborative relationship with African universities. Yeah, that's the reality. What does a university need to do in order to get to a point where you have at least you are beginning to talk of a memorandum of understanding? Well, what are the basic requirements that the university needs to have beyond being a university, of course? Um, if they are willing to uh, develop a collaborative relationship with uh, IUJ, mm. uh, be in terms of um, the exchange of faculty members or the exchange of students, then we're very happy uh, to start negotiating with such universities, which might be interested in having a partnership with IUJ. Do you have a huge and research? Actually, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, as I was uh, going to tell you, uh, IUJ is very much committed to the human resource development of African, uh, Africa, as I said earlier. And actually, uh, IUJ is uh, proud of having been a university which has received the largest number of uh, African students under the framework of the ABE initiative. You might have heard of this ABE initiative, which is a initiative of the uh, Japanese government uh, down through the uh, JICA, and which stands for Africa Business Education, ADE, and a pun is intended to, you know, uh, uh, with the um, name of the late Prime Minister, Mr. Abe, which uh, initiated this program. And IUJ has been the university uh, that has received the largest number of students under this Abe initiative framework. So we are very much committed to African, um, the human resource development of Africa. And in, in the same vein, we're very much interested in developing a friendly, a friendly relations with African universities as well. Do you have, uh, no, let me rephrase the question. How extensive and how diverse is the research component within your university? Oh, research, uh, okay, uh, you know, let me tell you a bit about the uh, programs and courses we offer at IOJ. As I said, we have two graduate schools. One is international relations and the other international management. And in this first graduate school, international relations, we have three programs. One is international relations program, which is designed for diplomats and uh, government officials who deal with you know, foreign relations, transactions, etc. And the second program in the International Relations School is the Development, uh, International Development Program, which is basically economic-based uh, program 
designed for the government officials working in the economic ministries, financial ministries, or Minister of Trade and Industry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And third program we have in, in our Graduate School of International Relations is the Public Policy Program, which is quite similar to Dr. Ian's uh, program might be, uh, but you know it is designed to uh, develop the pro, um, capability of, of government officials or those working in public entities to plan, implement, and evaluate their policies. So we have international relations, development economics, and public policy-oriented courses in our graduate school, school of international relations. And in our second school, International uh, Graduate School of International Management, which is basically a business school, but it also it, this course, this program also offers courses so that the students can learn how to develop business activities and international transactions between Kenya and Japan or, you know, with whatever countries they want, want to develop uh, uh, economic activities with. So actually we, are very, we have a very diverse uh, course offerings. And we are hoping that uh, we are capable of accommodating most of the needs that students bring with them when they come to IJ. Okay. Um, looking beyond, um, I want to come back to you, Dr. Ian. Um, some of the things you said, the hope is that uh, students haven't gone through grips, I mean, and those who are thinking about making the decision. So are you saying that the target then is for those students from the African continent who want to come and pursue an education, but have the end goal of coming back to use that uh, experience to work for their governments? Is that what we are saying? Oh, yes. Uh, we have actually uh, had some students also from Kenya, the justice system, uh, the central bank, or in, like even Uganda central bank, or um, um, revenue authority. We, we hope that we give them a package that will enhance or, you know, improve their understanding of the policies that underpin the, those institutions. And... Uh, um, I must also re-emphasize that uh, we, beyond G-Cube, we, the GRIPS as, uh, in general is committed to improving um, our institutional capacities in Africa. So um, in general, we hope that students will finish go back to their governments. Uh, but of course, usually this now depends on the individual students who finish university. Some of them want to go back and work with their governments or they want to go back and work with other governments uh, so it, it now depends on the individual student when he finishes but in general yes we would be happy that students who leave uh, uh, institutions in Africa go back to study and go back uh, when we go to study and when they come back go back to those institutions and improve them there is always a challenge uh, I must emphasize that there is always a discord um, uh, mis you know Mis, uh, misinterpretation of after studies before af before studies and after studies there is a very huge con contradiction and we hope that our governments in Africa really uh, rethink how to integrate their diaspora after studies uh, sometimes there is a kind of um, a huge power relation issue or some kind of um, uncoordinated uh, behavior between uh, the institutional you know power holders and stuff so i hope that if we give them we have given them a chance to go and study when they come back let, let's give them a platform to demonstrate these kinds of skills and then we can have a much improved institution or, or maybe compare what they have studied with what we have if we feel what we have is better then we help improve what we have uh, in many ways we need to really create a platform for our diaspora students uh, who come back after studies it's a, definitely I, I i feel like you have re echoed about it a uh, second time and maybe i think we need to think about how our government think about education okay. and this does not actually apply to japan only but also to institutions in uganda if you go back for studies and finish your masters then you need to bring back that knowledge to the institution and apply it so definitely in one way or another there is some 
disconnected reality somewhere. So we need to improve that. Uh, that's one fact. Dr. Ian, thank you. Uh, I, just, I want to ask you the same question I asked uh, the good professor. That is the research question. Uh, mm -hmm. I ask this because many of the in uh, institutions of higher learning in East and Central Africa, as good as they are, don't tend to have a very strong research component. Uh, research isn't something that is emphasized. Now, if you're dealing with issues of policy and issues of management, the question then that I ask is how strong is the research component within your institution? Yeah, uh, well, uh, research is core. Uh, in ge Generally, in Japan, the research component is the core component of the entire establishment of universities. And um, in general, uh, professors, uh, faculties, and their students must emphasize the idea of, um, of research. Um, gratefully, we have research, uh, we have the platform for research funding in Japan. Uh, one under the JSPS and other foundations uh, of goodwill, they fund, they actually fund greatly the academic endeavors. So if, if, uh, if there is anything called research, Japan, uh, Japan institutions, including GRIPS and uh, definitely IUJ and other universities in Japan, uh, definitely you, def you have you, the, the, the number one, is the research component. Um, we have collaborations, as you asked uh, Professor Hiroshi, uh, about collaborations with Africa. Uh, beyond institutional collaboration, we have uh, individual researcher collaborations. And here we've been emphasizing um, collaborations with Africa generally. Uh, take, for instance, uh, on my side, we always have uh, collaborations, individual researcher collaborations with uh, African institutions and we target people who are willing to, you know, conduct research with us so that they can aid in our understanding of Africa beyond our imagination. So, uh, to mention, uh, we, we already have been writing actually quite a number of books, in uh, collaborative books, uh, with Makere University and University of Nairobi. Uh, we have uh, quite a number of people, and usually we invite uh, scholars from uh, African institutions to join us here, or sometimes on a short term or uh, as um, visiting scholars to, you know, to, to be here and maybe we share knowledge about what's going on in Africa and also we share with them what's going on in Japan. So actually I must emphasize that the, the research is core and uh, it, it's, it cuts across all institutions in Japan. Ian, Dr. Ian, is, you mentioned uh, scholarships, that scholarships are available. One of them, of course, is the MEXT. This is the Ministry of Education and Culture that is available through the embassies in the various African countries. What other scholarship opportunities are there for GRIPS? Okay, well, first of all, um, even for the MEXT, we have uh, embassy, embassy recommended. Yep. But we also have uh, institutional recommended. Mm -hmm. So your groups can actually can can actually recommend a student, basing on uh, their potential, without necessarily being uh, without being recommended by the embassy. Okay. Professor. So within next we have those two. Uh, we have those two uh, embassy and institution. Mm. So students interested in institutions. They can actually go on our website and check um, our programs and see how they can apply under our institutional best recommendation. All right, Professor, do if you we have are convinced uh, about the requirements, as as Hiroshi said? Yeah. Uh, then we will definitely recruit you, Professor Hiroshi. Do you also have uh, opportunities for scholarships? Well, yes, we have plenty of uh, opportunities. Of course, uh, if the applicant uh, is working for the public sector, they might first approach the Japanese embassy or JICA Nairobi office. But if they are self-sponsored, then they, they can simply visit our website and they start, start applying to our university, during which time they have a box to tick if they want to have financial support from the university or any scholarship support providing organizations. We have our own 
sources for scholarships, as well as private foundations and uh, companies that are willing to support uh, IEJ students. Yeah, so we have a variety of sources. So as I said, IEJ is rather expensive university, but don't let that fact discourage you mm. or the applicants from applying. Well, thank you very much, uh, yeah. both so, of you, uh, gentlemen. Let me, let, let me chip in a little bit. Yes. Uh, I, would, I want to emphasize that uh, you can join as a private student, mm -hmm. but you can actually get a scholarship uh, when you're there, or waivers, or these kinds of... There are many chances uh, when you enter a university. Beautiful. Uh, Midori-san, remind us about what is happening this weekend on the 30th and the 1st of October. Yes, uh, we are going to have a study in Japan online fair and we are going to invite invite 26 universities and they are going to introduce 46 programs, actually including today's guest, International, International University of Japan and GRIPS. So I, I'd like you to check our, our website or Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can reach us when you uh, search, you use study in Japan for Africa. Study mm. in Japan for Africa, you can reach us. And then we have, you will see the, our website to, to join our event this okay. weekend, please. So go to Google study in Japan for Africa. You'll see the link, open the link. You will see the various universities that will be exhibiting this Friday and Saturday, 30th and, uh, and 1st. And then once you see them, you can then select which one you'd like to engage yes, with, yes. select a time, and uh -huh. in any of the two days, then you have, and you have at least three universities per day. Uh, yes, three university you can select. You can select. Yes, but two days we have, so six university at least you can meet. You can e-meet directly with them. So please try to take, take advantage of these opportunities. Indeed. Asante sana Midori-san for Karitena. joining us today.